Dan. All right, we are live with the Catalyst Sport Podcast. Uh, I think this is episode nine, and today we have a, a very special treat. We have the third co-founder of Catalyst Sport, uh, Joe and my business partner, Dr. Kathy Dooley, with us today, um, alongside uh, Joe, co-hosting the podcast with me. Uh, welcome in, and good morning, guys. Good morning. Morning, morning. So today we're talking about something that's um, very timely. Um, you know, we're in the middle of the COVID-19, uh, you know, shelter in place, quarantine. And uh, we're going to talk about home workouts today. We're going to talk to kind of how to adjust to the new normal, make and do with what you've got, how to, um, you know, set goals and how to avoid distractions and, you know, really make your best fitness possible given the situation. Um, so Joe and Kathy, what do you think are some of the biggest hurdles that people are facing right now when it comes to home workouts? Joe, do you want to go first? Um, no, you, you can take the read. Okay. Uh, I have, I've had a lot of feedback from, uh, some of my clients uh, that I'm doing with online appointments with, and they are struggling with not being able to order weights, not being able to order bells, trying to adapt to doing things at home when there's so many distractions there, it, there, it's a very, very challenging thing because they've gone to this gym, which creates a space for them to let go of some of their life and come in and, and really enjoy moving their body. And now they have so many of the things that are, are possible stressors right in their face as they train. Let's talk about that first. I, I do want to get to the part about equipment. Obviously, it's a uh... Uh, for those that don't know, there's a, a run on kettlebells right now. You basically can't find them anywhere. I'm, I'm getting messages from people I haven't heard from in, in years and years saying, you know, um, you know, you got any of the kettlebells? Where do we get the kettlebells? Um, but we'll, we're going to come back to equipment limitations in a minute. In a minute, Let's start with the kind of the mindset and the distraction. Um, I think that's really hard for people. And I think a lot of people just now are starting to appreciate um, how difficult it is to work out in their home. Um, you know, a lot of people that have never done it before and um, it, it is a big mental shift. You know, your living room, your space that you're used to relaxing in, you know, you hang out, you sit on the couch, you watch TV. Now this is your workout space and that, that's a total different mental energy. Um, so what are, what are some solutions that you guys, um, you know, have used for yourselves for home workouts, uh, you know, both currently and in the past to, to get through that? I do a lot of training at home with my husband and my husband trains exclusively at home. And so I learned a lot from him about, uh, well, creating a, a space for the workout and a time to complete the workout. And if you can create the time and the space, then you're already in the place and it, it definitely, definitely helps. Yeah, you know, one of the things we've talked about a lot over the years is, is you know, the non-negotiable appointment. You put it on your calendar, um, and then if someone wants to book a meeting at that time, sorry, I'm already booked. Um, I, I think that's really important for people um, with the home workouts. One of the things that, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people, and, and even I, thought I fall prey to sometimes, is if you say, all right, I'm just going to, when I finish my work, that's going to be when I go and work out. And, um, you know, you're working at home and, and, and that's an adjustment in and of itself. It's, you know, kind of beyond the scope of what we're talking about, but you know, you're working from home, you're adjusting to working from home and, you know, your work day runs long and this and that, and it, it just doesn't end up happening. So I think it's really important that people, um, or at least one solution that that's worked well is, is to just, you put it on your calendar and, and then that's your time. Um, there's, there's no scheduling over it. Um, Jason, that's something you did for me a very long time ago, because a lot of people make the assumption that we three as gym owners, oh, well, we own a gym, therefore we always work out. We always have the time to work out. And they don't understand that you guys are, are uh, this amazing team of running the space and I'm running a, a clinical side of it. And that if you are present, people will love to ask you questions right. and interrupt your workout. And so you have to basically put that, that, uh, that meeting up where you're saying, I have an appointment with myself from 12 to one, and it's not a time to ask me questions on the floor. It's not a time for me to take uh, texts or emails or exactly. it is time for me to train the non-negotiable time. And if you can do that in your home space, you can do it in your life space. I know there's a couple of uh, people out there that are uh, parents and they're thinking, well, I'm 
I'm stuck at home. I don't have the knee involved anymore because we're not supposed to be like spreading around everywhere. Um, how do I occupy my kids during this time? Um, it seems to be a, an objection or a, a hurdle to overcome. I've spoken to a, a bunch of our members that uh, had that question. And I kind of came away with like two different scenarios for that. Um, one is you have to just ask your partner to help out for like 45 minutes, a half hour. Maybe you don't have a full hour to get this workout in, but you're going to get it done in the 30, 40 minutes. And then you trade off and then your partner gets to work out. That way you're both working out. You occupy the kids during that time somewhere separate from where you're working out. The other option is if you don't have that is to try to involve them in the workout somehow. So that way you can get working out. They're mentally stimulated somehow and not driving you out of your mind because that's one of the biggest problems right now of people sitting at home, having kids running around is how do you stimulate them to leave you alone and not go crazy? Um, at least that's how I'm experiencing it. We're having a hard time finding kettlebells. Kids are weight. Exactly. <laughs> I, I did a session on Saturday with somebody, uh, with a group of people actually, and one of them had two kids and we just said, hey, let's get um, Lena and Rafa in this session. And like, he was goblet squatting them. The, the kid was sitting on his back during push-ups, and they were loving it because they were just like, just involved with their dad, like on him and in front of him and doing the same things. And he got some you know, load some resistance from, from the kids. It was a little like mentally taxing, but it worked. It was good. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, I think it's like a good thing too. And like, you know, I'm, I'm not a parent, um, you know, Joe is, but um, you know, I think it's a good thing to like set that example for the kids too, that like as crazy as the world has gone, that, that you're still taking care of your health. I think that's, um, you know, a really good role model thing to do for the kids that, that they learn that exercise and taking care of your body is, is just something that you do. Um, not negotiable. It's not negotiable. I think the other thing that's, um, I, I really, I just thought of it when you mentioned that Jonathan always works out at home, uh, Dr. Dooley's husband. Um, Jonathan is just like so Zen and like unperturbable. <laughs> and um, I think one of the things that people probably, uh, some people, um, probably not the majority, but like a, a minority like myself who kind of learned to work out with like super high intensity and like, you know, always listen to heavy metal. And now it's like, you know, you can't stomp around your living room the same way that you stomp around, you know, some like um, dirty powerlifting gym. Uh, so that's a skill that I think some people um, are, are learning to deal with too, of like, hey, like to work out at a little bit of like a lower mental excitation state of like, Hey, you, you just got to put your work in no matter what, even if you can't, you know, listen to Metallica and like eat half a block of chalk and, you know, rattle a squat cage around, um, you, you still got to take care of your body. So I think that's um, kind of worth putting out there too, for some people that are struggling with that, that um, you're, you're not, you're not alone <laughs> um, and, and it's okay. <laughs> That kind of leads into what we were saying, or what one of the notes we wanted to touch on was uh, adjusting your expectations during these workouts. Um, like, you're not going to be deadlifting as much as you possibly can right now. You're not going to put a hole through your floor, you know, trying to drop massive amounts of weights if you have them. Um, but many people aren't going to have them. So just, you know, adjust your expectations in your workout. Maybe they're not a full hour and a half anymore. They're only 30 minutes. So you, you got to change the style of your workout a little bit too, to incorporate the, the less load available and the less time available and the, the slightly different atmosphere and mindset that you have to take going into the workout. Yeah. I, I, had, a, I had an interesting uh, email exchange with one of our members, um, someone who's, who's done really well with, uh, with us. And, um, you know, one of the things he was working on and he was really excited about uh, right before, you know, all this stuff happened was that he had, um, he had surpassed a body weight deadlift. I think he's deadlifting like, um, you know, I think he weighs about 160, 165. And now he was pulling about 180 for three sets of five, I think in his last workout. And, um, 
you know, one of the things we did last week, uh, we had a kind of town hall for our members where people could just kind of come in and ask questions, Q and A. And, um, you know, he was concerned about losing progress on his deadlift. And, and, and I told him like, as long as you're swinging a kettlebell, he's got a kettlebell at home, like you're swinging a kettlebell at home and, and you're getting better at that. Your deadlift just simply can't go down. And, um, so the email exchange that I had with him, he followed up with that. He's like, well, how many, how many times do I need to swing this 26 kilo kettlebell, um, to make it equal to, to 180 pound, three sets of five deadlift? Like how much do I have to do to maintain the, the numbers that I had just achieved? And, uh, it was a really interesting question and I didn't necessarily know the answer right off the bat. And, and then when I thought about it, I told him, you know, don't think of this as a, um, as a dosage calculation of like how many, you know, how many kettlebell swings are the equivalent of one deadlift at, you know, X weight or whatever. Um, but think of it as skill practice that if you are, you know, engaging the skill of, of hip extension and practicing your hip hinge and, and powerful hip drive, these skills that exist in both, um, you know, in this case, in the kettlebell deadlift as well, or sorry, the kettlebell swing as well as the barbell deadlift. Um, as long as you're working on those skills and working on those attributes, they're going to carry over one into the other. And um, so I think it kind of highlights a couple things for people um, that I want to bring up is, is, is one is skill practice that, you're not necessarily going to be able to do the exact same exercise as you were doing, but you can still practice a lot of the same skills and continue to get better at those skills, whether those are, are specific movement patterns, whether that's the skill of tension, whether that's the skill of um, abdominal pressure, whatever it is, that there's still a lot of skills that you can practice and so kind of back up from exercises. And, um, and then the second thing is just consistency. You know, if, if you're working out and you're putting the work in, um, you know, I always like to say, and I, I think I've probably even said it on this podcast before that one of like the dirty secrets of the fitness industry, you know, we're always marketing of this method is better than that method and this and that the dirty secret of the fitness industry is that most things work. Um, if you're working out, you're probably getting better. Um, and, and of course, some things work better than others and some things have a lower, you know, risk profile relative to injury and whatnot. And, and, and you know, all that's important, but most things work. So, um, you know, think of it in terms of skill practice and think in terms of, you know, consistent effort. And I think that'll, um, you know, help a lot of people to, to just kind of get in the mindset that they need to, to, to make progress over this, um, you know, exceedingly strange time. I think that's such a smart thing to focus on skill practice because so many people don't make time necessarily for that with right. their lifts in their programs. They're not working about like, they're not always, and Catalyst is an exception because I know that Catalyst has a, a built-in program with the SPT program for um, training intradominal pressure, training skills practice. And, and you guys are such great programmers that it, it sneaks in without a lot of people knowing. Right. And uh, or maybe being totally cognizant of it, it's happening. And now they have this massive opportunity to really enhance those skills to come back. I think that's a really important point to make. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely something I'm focused on in my workouts right now. If, um, you know, I, I have the luxury of having a, a fair amount of kettlebells and, and even a barbell at home, but um, there's still some things that, that I'm limited on. And it's like, Hey, listen, I, I still got to just work on my skills here. And um, you know, which, which kind of probably brings us to one of the other things we wanted to touch on here is, is goal setting. Um, how can people set goals during this time? I think um one of the things that people are probably struggling with on goal setting is they don't know how long this is going to last. Um, you know, I think now, and you know, just today being March 30th that we're recording this, I think today we're starting to get a little bit more clarity on, you know, this Easter being the peak in New York city seems like it's in the news a lot this morning, which, you know, um, but so people are struggling with not knowing how long they're going to be quarantined for. Um, and, and in general, goal setting seems to be something that, that people are struggling with. What, what can people do to set some kind of achievable medium term goals here uh, during this, this quarantine shelter in place? I'll, I'll speak to that. Uh, I've set a couple goals for myself. So, oh, cool. Tell us. Um, yeah, I'm super excited because uh, I've had this amazing opportunity to actually be at home. And I have very little of that opportunity placed on, in my life. I have not built the opportunity to have a lot of home time. And now that I am here, um, and I do work out quite a bit at home anyway, 
but it's it's so interesting to say what you know what can I do in four weeks what what can I do as a goal for myself since I am here a lot what can I see myself doing in four weeks that is that's really significant can I d- increase the the length of my exhale by double mm. that would be mean I can control intra-abdominal pressure for a deadlift or a pull up or a press um, can I uh, I have a pull-up bar. I'm sure that most people have access to that. Um, I think they're still able to be found on Amazon and and um, in in you know some places that are still open. Uh, for we have three in our house, right? Just a doorway one, a full uh, two full ones, because we're obsessed with hanging and, and pulls. And it's a, a skill that I'm not very good at. So I, was, I decided to say to myself, okay, in four weeks, can I take my my pull my body weight pull up from three to seven? I think I might be able to do that in four weeks. And if I can hit that, and then if, if this extends to six weeks, can I go to 10? Can I, could I get possibly somewhere between seven and 10 body weight pull-ups and, you know, a six-week quarantine? That would be a cool outcome for a quarantine. I love, there's a couple of things here that I love. Uh, well, one, I love that you have three pull-up bars in your house, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have to surround myself with things that, for my, that are my weakness, right? <laughs> Your weakness is the press. It's like Pavel says, to press a lot, you got to press a lot. You got to press a lot. Um, <laughs> one of the things I love there is that you have kind of tiered goals of that. If this is going to last four weeks, this is where I think I, I, I can be. And, you know, if this lasts six weeks, this is where I think I can be. So that you've kind of built some flexibility into your plan here. Um, that if things go longer than we expect, well, you've got a kind of contingency for that. So you have some flexibility in your goals. I really like that. Um and um, tell us a little bit about like, so what's your plan? So now you've got body, three body weight pull-ups. Um, you've got your goal. How, um, how is your goal translated into a plan um, to get those body weight pull-ups? Well, normally minutes? I don't train body weight pull-ups, but once a week in my okay. that I would do other things that involved, you know, bigger equipment. Sure. Uh, so if you have a limited amount of equipment and then you're like, okay, I can do push-ups, I can do pull-ups, I can do lunges, I can do get-ups. I can do lateral lunge. I have this collection of activities. Which, what is one thing that I can do multiple times a week now that I normally couldn't do multiple times a week? And I can really up the training on that. And so it becomes rather than doing pull-ups one day a week, I do them four days a week. And then your goal is not just what a goal may have been taking you like four months. Now it might take you six weeks because it is the primary thing that you're working on rather than just a piece of a total workout program. That's, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Are you doing all your pull-ups in one workout during the day or are you doing them kind of throughout the day? Um, so uh, I'm starting to like do more grease the groove because that really works for me. And I don't know okay. if it's, uh, the listeners do that a lot. But tell, us I, what, I tell, tell our listeners what grease the groove is. Oh, okay. So it's a, a term kind of coined. I think it was coined by Pavel, yes? I think so. As far as I know, that's the only person I've ever heard really say it. Yeah, that's how I heard about it. So I hear you guys use it a lot also. Uh, and so ever since I did the RKC, uh, when Pavel was, you know, in charge of that, uh, it was this term that really worked for me because I'm not what I would consider a natural athlete. Uh, for me, I've had to, to build into my athleticism as an adult and, um, I, I was kind of awkward and <laughs> was never really, uh, very talented, but I think hard work beats talent when talent won't work hard. And so I just reached the group, which means that every time I would pass a pull-up bar, I would have to hang from it or do a pull from it. And maybe you don't have a pull-up yet. Maybe you would use a super band, one of those circular elastic bands, and then you would just see yourself uh, greasing that pattern. And neurologically, your brain adapts to this neuroplastic pattern. And at Catalyst, you guys are so great at building programs that grease the groove, that really start to wire a pattern. But for me, if I'm going to be home all the time, then I make a deal. Every time I pass the pull-up bar, I have to do something. And you can build in quite a few reps doing that in a day it's 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 funny that we're talking about grease the groove so i think there's two ways to do it just to kind of like tie a bow on 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 pull-up programming there which i know a lot of people are are asking about i think a great way to do it is grease the groove um like dr dooley said of just you know um like one of the things we used to do um when i worked at new york sports club is like every time i walked past a pull-up bar i would do a couple pull-ups um and i think when you're doing grease the groove one thing i would really recommend is recording the number of reps you do in a week so not in a day um but in a week um there's some like tally apps in the app store that are free that basically like you can just you know uh 
touch the button six times when you did six pull-ups and you just leave it in your pocket. Um, or, you know, like you can carry around like a little index card and make tally marks on that and, and, and tally it up at the end of the week. Um, so I think greasing the grooves a, a great way and probably one of probably my most preferred way to get good at pull-ups, um, especially for number of pull-ups. Um, another way you can do it is there's a bunch of programs on um, like Pavel's fighter pull-up program, I think is like a five set pull-up program where you do like, you know, in the first week you do like 10, eight, six, six, and four or something. And there's like a math to, to how you can do it. Um, Jason, who built that program for me? And when I was really, really bad at pull-ups. I remember, I remember you were like, it was like heavy deadlifts and frequency pull-ups. Um, and you had me pressing a lot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it sounds like me. Um, it, was, it was extremely effective. I would say the strongest, um, th that was a major tipping point when I wasn't really understanding that, that fight or pull up, how much volume that accumulated. Right. And you're right. It's all about volume. It's all about volume when it comes to pull ups. So like the fighter pull ups, you know, if you don't want to do it throughout the day, if you're just like, Hey, I want to spend 15 minutes a day. Um, the fighter pull-up program is a great way to do that because it's like five sets per day, I believe. Um, and there's like a math to how it how it progresses. So you can Google that Pavel's fighter pull-up program. Another one that I like a lot is is a very similar um, structure. It's called the Recon Ron pull-up program. Um, you know, Recon Ron, I, I think, is a fictional character who is a recon marine. But um, if you you know um, if you Google the Recon Ron pull-up program, same thing. Um, but um, you know, when it comes to greasing the groove, it's funny, right before all this happened, um, and, and it brings me to kind of my next point on home workouts, which is that you should be recording what you're doing, um, which is not just home workouts, but I think um, more important than ever with the home workouts um, to, to keep you consistent and keep you accountable to your work is to record it. Um, you're talking more about like data. You don't have to set up a video camera and record your workout. Yes, just, yes. Record, record recording in a, in a notebook, in a notebook, how many sets and reps you did. Um, yes, recording in a notebook um, or it sheet totally of paper. Or not. To yeah. You, you want no question about what you have done and accumulated and you get so competitive with yourself. Yeah. This year for me is the, the get up challenge, right? So I'm doing the number of get ups that of the day of the year that it is. Like today is 90. So I have to do 90, <laughs> 90 and it could be body weight, it could be anything. It's just like 90 is a number and it's tangible. Right. And when, whether it's playing with my dog doing get ups or doing loaded get ups, it is 90. And I know I've done 90 and I know I've done 4,000 this year. And so when you start to see those numbers, you get like competitive with yourself, which yes. is also very fun. Absolutely. I mean, I was going back right before all this happened. I was going back on some of my old training notebooks from um, like when I was getting ready for the this, uh, level two kettlebell certification. I think it was like the summer of 2013. That was when I felt like I was in some of the best shape I'd ever been in. So I was going back on my journals like, what was I doing back then? And one of the things I found in my in my journal was at the end of each week, it would say, you know, 196 grease the groove pull ups, um, 184 grease the groove pull ups, because that's you know, and now I can go back to that, you know, now this is seven years later. Well, now I have a, a guideline for, okay, wow, well, like, you know, seven years ago, I did 200 pull-ups in a week. Great. Um, I have something to work up to. And um, so when you're recording it, um, when you're, you're keeping that notebook, well, it keeps you accountable. It makes your efforts more tangible. It, it, I think, you know, I've talked a lot about this in the past about, you know, what it does for you mentally, that it, it reinforces your success. Um, but it also gives you, you know, data that you can go back on um, for, for years and years um, of how to troubleshoot and how to make the most out of your training. So um, something we talk about a lot, but keeping a notebook is, is now more important than ever. It takes the emotion that makes you a scientist. Right, exactly. And it's, it's objective. One. Yes, it's uh, the way to be objective about the subjective experience. And then you're like, oh my God, I am capable of doing that. What else am I capable of? It opens up the doorway to, to acceptance of the, the current limitation and also expanding past the limitation and, and experiencing true growth in a time of quarantine. Absolutely. I think it, it hits on a really, um, you know, important catalyst principle of, of, of Kaizen, of small improvement. It's like you said it, you know, right there. Um, I, I forgot the exact words you used, but like accepting the present situation, right? The essence of mindfulness is to accept the present without judgment. And um, the notebook, you know, it, it puts you right into the present. Here's exactly what I did today. And then when you come back to that workout, you know, whether it's tomorrow or next week, whatever it is, um, you can just beat beat it by a little bit like you said being competitive with yourself um just kind of you know always advancing the ball a little bit um those gains add up you know a lot over the long term 
Um, you can have seen, seen yourself do something in the past that you're born as good at. I was looking at my training log this morning, actually, and uh, from a year ago when I had a lot more cardiovascular fitness because I was doing Kenneth J's 1515 protocol with a kettlebell. It's a 12 kilo bell for snatching. And he uh, talks about VO2 max training and how great it is for the heart. And I really want a healthy heart. I had a couple of parents or, or, or a couple of my parents. Definitely. <laughs> a couple of parents. A couple of family members that had heart disease and uh, had had some pretty serious things happen at 41 and I'm 41. So I was like, Ooh, I, I probably should think about this because heart attacks kind of, they, they catch you by surprise. They don't, not a lot of people know that they're coming. And uh, I was up to like 25, 30 minutes of doing 15, 15 protocol, which, you know, Kenneth Jay will tell you is 20 minutes is the equivalency of an hour of distance running. And, um, and it's a heck of a lot harder and, and is better for your heart than the distance running is. And his research is very supportive of that. And like I did I, yesterday, my husband and I did 15, 15 protocol together. We did it as a couple's activity, which was really fun. He really enjoyed it. But I was like, oh my God, I'm way more out of shape than I was last year. I did 10 minutes, which was, you know, 2.5 times less <laughs> than I right. did a year ago. And oh my gosh, I, I was, it was like this big mirror to put on myself of, yeah, I may have been busy and I may have been, you know, but now I'm home and I have the ability to really focus on my health in a time where people aren't always so healthy. Some people are in the hospital and they, they want so much to be able to breathe and they can't. And I have the opportunity to, to strengthen my lungs and strengthen my heart. And all I need is a plan. And doing a, a training log really does make you reflect, but then it encourage you, encourages you to step to the next level of past your limitation. Yeah. One of the other things we talked about before we hit record here was like creativity and avoiding boredom. And I think that um, we've kind of already done a lot at that, even though we haven't directly addressed it. But, um, you know, when you have a plan and when you have a goal, um, you can do the same exercises every single day. You won't get bored of them because you're working towards something. So, um, you know, uh, that's kind of my like my first thought on creativity and avoiding boredom. Um, you know, that's, that's something we've been hearing a lot from people. Um, I don't, I don't know if you guys have further thoughts on, on creativity and avoiding boredom. I have never experienced boredom. I don't know what that is. So um, when people describe it to me, they're like, well, it's like, um, cause they'll tell me like, Kathy, breathing drills are boring. And I'm like, oh, let me help you understand how exciting it can be. <laughs> because what you can do is like, oh, if, if this is easy for you, make it harder. Like if you, if you think that breathing in for five and out for 10 for 20 minutes is a simple task, then try six and 12. And that is not linear. That's exponential change for a lot of people. Like just push yourself. Like if you find yourself, you know, falling into a lull, this, that, that's a limitation. That is a, a blatant limitation in your ability to, to excel. Like Jason, you often say, um, show me the wall and I'll break it down. Sure. Which is in my head a lot. Like, oh, that's easy. And then my, my husband's my breathing coach, so I'll say, honey, that, I think that might have been too easy. He's like, oh, really? And he like, <laughs> puts his hands together. He's like, yes. He's so excited to know that you know, I don't find it boring because I find you have to find the thing that stimulates what you want as far as a goal set. So if, if, if breathing for you means that you'll have better control under a deadlift where you're not gonna, intra-abdominal pressure won't be the problem. then again, that's skill training. And if, if you guys ever need tips on how to avoid boredom, I think that the three of us can really solve that problem because I, don't, I just can't go see the three of us bored a lot. <laughs> no, I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I think that having a focus for your training, I think is, is, is really so important. And I think that that's the reason why um, people often get bored is because they're just, they're just unfocused. It's like, okay, here's my workout. I'm not sure what I'm doing today. I do, well, let me just do a couple push-ups. And it's like, oh, I already did a lot of push-ups this week and, um, you know, this and that, whatever. And they just, they don't have a plan. And, um, you know, we can start talking a little bit about Catalyst Virtual um, Training Program. Um, you know, we're doing virtual sessions and um, I think getting a little guidance from a coach and just kind of how you can work towards your goals. Um, you know, a professional, a little bit of professional guidance goes a long way in terms of getting you focused and kind of figuring out how to, how to make the most out of this time. And um, I think that can help people with boredom too. Um, 
Jason and Joe, you, I think the world needs to know how incredible you guys are at programming. And, you know, for me, like I am a person in fitness and in health and I'm a clinician, but most people would think, oh, well, you know, she can design her own workouts. And I'm like, it's so different when you have an expert helping you establish a goal, training for your limitations and learning how to exceed them, but not pushing you into pain or pushing you into failure, uh, which doesn't work. Uh, you guys always, you know, are, are really focused on helping someone to maintain what they have, but also to excel and, and to hit new landmarks. And that, is, that takes finesse. That's not just some kind of workout that you get in a book and then you try out for yourself. It's not a videotape that you put in. Nothing to disrespect those things. I love anybody that's training. But when you have established goals and you have um, something, the, the quality of program that you guys give and the reflection that you guys give and the discussions that you give and the feedback you give, it's just not, it's so valuable. And so when someone invests into something like the SPT program online or in person right now online, it, it's, it's a, a massive testament to the value you guys give as expert coaches. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I think it's, you know, I always say it's like, you can't tickle yourself and like, you kind of can't program for yourself either. Sometimes okay. that you write yourself a program and like, um, for example, like, you know, maybe you wrote in the program, you know, 10 sets of 10 kettlebell swings at a really heavy weight. And it's like, you get like six sets into it. It's like, man, this is, heavy. This is tough. And you start doubting the programming. It's like, oh, did I did I overdo this? Did I do too much? Um, or you, you know, might go the other way. You finish your workout and say, oh, maybe I need to do more here. Um, and, and that's the real enemy of, of consistency is, uh, you know, whether I could finish it or whether I felt the need to do more or whatever. And it's like, you second guess yourself as the programmer. Um, but if I write for you, hey, you're going to do 10 sets of heavy swings and you trust me, and you get six sets in and you're sucking wind and you're like, Hey, was this over-programmed? No, this is, you know, this is written by a professional, someone who, you know, went through a process and assessed me or coached me or, you know, did something that's, you know, involves expertise. Now it's like, I just got to finish this. Um, I, I don't have a choice. Um, so I think that's, um, you know, one of the kind of hidden benefits of programming that it's not just about finding the right thing physiologically. It's also about kind of like, psychologically, you know, almost giving up control of like, Hey, you know what? I, I don't have to figure out the answers. I just have to do the work. And I think that's really liberating for a lot of people. And having you program for me, I can turn back and ask you questions about it, get right. encouragement specifically from you. If I do my own programming, who am I going to ask myself? <laughs> that's not going to work out well. I mean, I could try. Um, but if I can turn to you, uh, even, even if it's not you, maybe I could turn to the other people that are working out in the same session as me. Like after the session, we could talk about it and socialize virtually because this is all happening virtually now and not in person. So it's also a good way for us all to, um, you know, not be stuck in the four walls and actually talk to another human being and like see another human being on zoom is like, it works pretty well. Uh, it's better than not talking to anybody except for my one-year-old who doesn't talk back, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately. <laughs> he screams, he goes, yeah, Dada! Yeah. Uh, Aren't we all back, so glad we still have the internet? Uh, like, right. what did they do in 1918? Uh, I guess right. that, 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 they spread it really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like millions of people died. <laughs> it's such a wonderful thing to be able to to honor each other, uh, and honor the people that work in hospitals, to be able to self isolate, it, but also to keep our own fitness going, which is such an important piece of being able to get past a viral load like this, and and, and to be able to come out of it stronger and better than we were before. I mean, that's that's the point of the immune system to adapt, survive, and then strengthen itself. And, and training does exactly that. And if it's online, great. At least it keeps it going and you can do it with an expert, which is even better. Our virtual training platform um, kind of helps you with some of the stuff we talked about earlier about setting a, like a non-negotiable time or whatever. We have set times. You'll register on an app for those set times. And then, you know, you have that time. Don't cancel that time. Go to that, go to that session, log in. And like, that's the time you, you set for yourself. So someone's waiting for you, you know, and I think it's also one of the things I've noticed coaching the virtual workouts is like, it, it like humanizes it, it normalizes it. Like sometimes it's like, it's strange to be like, you know, 
pushing your coffee table out of the way and like swinging a kettlebell by yourself. But it's like, if you're on a zoom call and there's three or four other people doing that, it's like, it makes you work harder. There, there is, we're social animals, um, you know, truly. And when you see other people doing it, um, it humanizes it. And I, I definitely notice that, that people are working hard on these virtual training sessions and that, you know, when I'm talking to people, normally it's people outside of Catalyst who are telling me things of like, you know, I'm bored. I'm not sure what to do. It's like, I, I'm not seeing that in the virtual workouts. I'm seeing people that are, you know, oh man, I've been waiting all day for this. I'm, I'm so excited to, to see my friends um, or make new friends. Even like we had um, someone who, who's not a Catalyst member. She was in the, the group that I coached on Thursday night and um, you know, she, she loved it. It was great. And it was great to um, meet new people and great to, you know, th there is a social aspect to it that I think, um, you know, we've, we've always kind of had in semi-private training as a way to, um, kind of encourage what we're trying to encourage of, you know, making the work um, just part of something you do, that consistency aspect, using social um, proof as a consistency builder. And um, that, that's just as true, if not more true right now online when, when people are really craving, you know, social contact and really need it. Because like I said, we're, it's hardwired into our psychology, into our brains. We're, we're social animals. And, um, you know, if you're having trouble, join a, join a group, you know, join a group that, um, that's doing it and, and you're going to, you're going to fall in line pretty quick. And the risk of running is like sounding like a commercial, like we've talked about our podcast. Training. <laughs> right, right. We can sound like a commercial. All we want. But, so this next segment is brought to you by Catalyst Sport. <laughs> and uh, Jay, want to give us an overview of like what virtual training is? Like we yeah, talked about it, so, and so, we might as well just kind of sum it up for everybody. Yeah, so in the virtual training, uh, it's a semi-private training model, uh, meaning that we have uh, a few people per coach, and basically what we um, what we do is we have workouts that. Um, are designed for what you've got. So we have some that are body weight only. Um, if, if you have no equipment and you know, like, like we mentioned, kettlebells are back ordered everywhere. Um, if you've got no equipment, you're gonna be able to get a great body weight workout. Um, we have regressions and progressions built into it so that, you know, hey, if you're not able to do a, a you know, a push up or a one arm push up, then we've got the push up, the archer push up, the offset push up, the push up from knees, the tall plant. Like we've got, we've got it figured out. We're going to meet you at your level, wherever that is. And, and that includes how much equipment you have. So um, we've got the workouts. They're coached on a semi private basis. Um, they're with a group. Um, a small group, so to help motivate you. And the coaches, um, it's actually Zoom turns out to be a great format for online coaching. When I'm coaching, I'm just going to click around, um, you know, the different people doing the workouts and, you know, all right, I, I click on on Catherine. Hey, Catherine, here's something I want you to do on your kettlebell swing. And, and then I click over to, to John and, okay, John, hey, that, that looks great. And now I can just click to the next screen. So you're going to get a lot of coaching during it. Um, I think that's been the one um, you know, almost surprised for a lot of people, even for us as coaches, is, is just how much expertise in coaching we're able to deliver online. Um, so not to get myself off on a tangent there. So basically it's it's three to four students per, per session. Um, we've got set times. We've got about 25 times a week right now, um, both body weight. And then we also have, um, what I didn't mention is some, um, you know, if you have limited equipment, if you got a couple kettlebells um, or more than that, or you got a couple dumbbells, um, then we have workouts that involve some of these weights here. So you'll be able to use those too. And um, yeah, anything I missed there, Joe, anything uh, I should have mentioned? No, the, the programs are, are developed so that you will um, get some repeating and you can build your skills. Like as we were talking about before, because the only way to build a skill is by practicing the skill or something similar to it. Um, and they, they, they're going to repeat over time. So that way, you will adapt as we do this and reach your goals. Yeah, there's a logic to the programming. It's not just like a random workout of the day. Uh, I know uh, Fabian's our program director. Fabian's put a lot of thought into like the weekly cycle and what that looks like. Um, and that there's, you know, there's some repeat and then there's some variation and um, it, it gives you a chance to build consistency, but there's still, um, you know, there's still some variety in there and, and a structure to it so that it's, it, it's staying fresh and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's enjoyable. Everybody can, anybody can register for these sessions. Um, you could pay through mind body and register all at one time. If you go to mind body online, um, on a web browser, you could search for catalyst sport, make sure to make sport, and, uh, 
an acronym. It's got the periods in it. Um, you could also use the Mind Body app um, and search for us, and you'll see some packages and some singles there. Um, and if you have any other questions, I mean, email myself, Joe at Catalyst Sport, or Jason at Catalyst Sport dot com and uh you know we could talk you through it further on a more personal basis if uh that's what you need or want yeah as soon as you register you get sent the zoom link and uh, you'll show up for the zoom link and and the coaches you know the coaches will they'll demonstrate the exercise they'll show you what to do and then they'll help you with regressions and progressions and, and fit it to your level um but One that's of the questions uh, i did get was i have a yeah. really small apartment uh, can it still work for me? And I, my basic answer for that is like, if you could lay down flat on the floor in like a push up position, you have enough room for these workouts. Um, we're not going to have you like doing backflips and stuff. I mean, we could off the couch, you know, it might be fun, some skills practice there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, generally, if you could lie on the floor in push up position and you have enough room to do these workouts. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Cool. So though, um, hopefully that gave you guys uh, some some thoughts on how to make the most out of your home workouts. Um, we're going to continue to you know put out a lot of content. We're trying to um, you know just help people as much as we can. We know it's strange times, and we know that you know our role as as leaders in health and fitness and our role as experts is probably more important now than ever. So we're here to support you. Um, if if I can be helpful to you, I'm Jason at CatalystSport.com. Um, you know you. Get, Joe and Dr. Dooley, uh, they're out there too. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I want to, uh, can I give out your guys' emails too? Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. We have Dr. Kathy Dooley, that's D-R-K-A-T-H-Y. Actually, I'll give you your Catalyst emails, Dooley at CatalystSportNYC.com um, and Joe at CatalystSport.com. Um, shoot us an email. If we can be helpful to you, we would love to be helpful during this time. Um, make sure you follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, follow our email list. Um, we're putting out a lot of content, um, to support you. And, um, we hope we can be kind of a, a beacon of fitness and hope for you in these, um, you know, like I said, exceedingly unusual times. Um, any, any parting thoughts, Joe or Dr. Dooley? No, nope, I'm all set. Yeah, I just I'm excited for everyone in the world to get to experience you guys. <laughs> Usually you guys are reserved for the locals of New York City. And I, I, I think that people do not understand what a treat they will do for themselves, what a great thing they will do for themselves by investing in themselves during a time of of difficulty to really put themselves into a place where they can build fitness, they can build health and fitness together uh, during a, a time of isolation when they're, they're really, all the excuses are gone. All of them are it's gone. True. It's all gone now. You know, I know my house is not getting any cleaner, but man, I'm getting fit. <laughs> things you care about really, so really important. So, uh, it, it really, if this, if this matters to you, if it really matters to you in your heart, in your mind, you really want this for yourself, for your family, uh, these gentlemen have created the program to get you results. And like they said, all you got to do is do it. All you got to do is do all it. All you got to do is do it. And I mean, how, how often in life are you given a guarantee like that? It's just so rare. Uh, so I hope you guys take them up on it. So proud to answer any questions that you have clinically on my side of it. But I know these guys have it covered when it comes to the SPT program. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, until next time, this has been the Catalyst Sport Podcast. I'm Jason Kapnick here with Joe Boffy and Dr. Kathy Dooley. You got all three of the co-founders of Catalyst Sport uh, on today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. <laughs>